Mr. Black Hawthorne? Sorry, officer. I'm looking for the 42nd Street Theater. You're standing right in the lobby of it. Is Dan Christie up here? What would he be doing up here? Uh, no Dan Christie. Well, where is he? I don't think he's anywhere. I telephoned the Astor Bar, the Waldorf Grill, the Lambs Club, the Friars, the 21, the Store, Crystal Myers Fish Grotto, the Police, the Morgue, the Travelers A, the Westchester Hunt Club, and Roseland. No Dan Christie. Did you look at I the... looked in all the dressing rooms, Miss Lane's, the Chorus Girls, the Showgirls, even his own dressing room. I don't know where he is. Well, he's on a ten minutes. Go look for him again. Well, all right, but I'm not Frank Buck. <laughs> Another chorus. Instruction. Dan Christie. Just a second, sweetheart. What does he want to do? Show you his new brass knuckles? I've got news for you, Phoebe. Dan broke our dinner date tonight. Call that news? Now, wait. He said he had to break it because he had a surprise for me. Sounds like the old runaround. Sounds more like an engagement ring to me. What else would a surprise be? Well, I don't know. Men have given me lots of surprises. They were never rings. Come in. Victor Prince. Why, I thought you were... Oh, the... Lovely surprises. <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. I thought so. Time has only succeeded in making you more exquisite. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Phoebe. You haven't changed. <laughs> Vicky Lane in person. Not a facsimile, but the real thing in the flesh. And a couple of pounds too much of it. That was always one good thing about dancing with you, Victor. You were so strenuous, you kept me down to 110. That wasn't the only good thing about dancing with me, I hope. <laughs> uh, couldn't we have a little chat? Five minutes, Miss Lane. Oh, thanks, Tommy. I'm sorry, Victor, but the show must go on. Uh, Phoebe, will you tell Dan I'd like to see him before a number? Oh, Victor. Uh, gosh, it's been almost a year, hasn't it? A year of thinking of you, Vicky. No, there wasn't a day of my tour that I didn't miss you. I kept seeing your reflection in... Louisiana bayous, Arizona sunsets. No one could ever replace you, Vicky. You'll never be another victor in Victoria. Come back, Vicky. Oh, that's nice, Victor, but... I've uh... got the finest hotels in the country lined up, all of them waiting for you. Of course, you know, my heart is waiting, too. Well, I've got 2,000 people waiting for me, so I... Oh, Vicky, I've got a new step. I call it the victor. Oh, it later, goes like victor. this. Later. Am I late? See, I'm late. Goodbye. Goodbye, Vicky. Where's Dan? That's a good question. Maybe you've got an answer. What are you talking about? D.C., old unreliable himself. He's A.W.O.L. again. They've called every place but Grant's too. Say, maybe he's there. But the show are on now. What are we going to do? This is their ninth chorus. They're making up their own lyrics. Something better happen fast, because they don't know many. Well, Dan's never been this late. Well, he better have a good excuse this time, a big ham. Well, he has. For your information, he's buying me an engagement ring. He's merely delayed. He probably had Oh, to... he's probably making it himself. If he isn't the nicest thing. I think so. We're going to be married. Really? Well, your hard luck comes at once. Thanks. You're ready to go on alone. It's not the proper thing to do in 1942. Yes? Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't get yourself upset over nothing. Nothing. Remember Boston? Give the devil his due. She chased him. Well, he didn't run very fast. That's what it is, Phoebe. It always is when he's this late. I wish you wouldn't jump at conclusions unless you need the exercise. I'll find out soon enough. If he comes in reeking of perfume, I'll know right away who it is. If it's Taboo, it's that movie queen. If it's uh, Christmas night, it's that model. If it's my sin, it's that... Hey, that could be me. Well, thanks a lot for dropping me by. Oh, thank you, Danny, for the diapers and all. I had real fun. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Loads of it. The hunt club on the 17th? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Good night. May I come in and watch you make up? I'll bet it's so thrilling. Well, I'm kind of late and I won't make up tonight. Goodbye. Well, couldn't I come in and sort of sit backstage and sort of cheer you on or something? Well, it, it's kind of dull. Besides, it's closing night and everybody's kind of mixed up. Good night. Well, wait on your chin. Oh. Oh, oh my lipstick is always coming off so terribly. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. Yeah, Pop, you can take this home to Mom. Thanks, Danny boy. Uh, late? Late? Well, I can go to Sam. Sorry, Miss Connections. Places! You might be sorry you made them. What'd you say, Alfred? What made you so late, Dan? Where just, were you? I was just out shopping for something. 
When did you start using perfume? Oh, 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 that's some new toilet water I'm trying out. Too strong, baby? Too expensive to use this toilet water at $32 an ounce. What is it? Surrender. At $32 an ounce, the only dame I know that can afford to surrender is that Park Avenue Deb from the neck up, Marilyn Crothers. Oh, now you're just being feminine. Did you ever get tied up in traffic? Traffic? That's a new word for it. Hey, Christy, that's your cue. You're on. Let the thunder scare you Don't let it wear you down You may get wet, but you never can drown in the rain Don't be afraid of showers Feel like the flowers do Hairs will be nil if you will Trill a silly refrain Start Singing Run, little raindrop, run Get along, little cloud, get along I've got a date with a place in the sun So run, little raindrop, run Sing, little bluebird, sing Mr. Gloom is afraid of a song Go away, little blackbird Stay, little bluebird Run, run little, little raindrop, raindrop run. run You'd better go I live. You're gonna wind up deep, deep down in the dreary river. Run, little raindrop, run. Get along, little cloud, get along. I've got a date with a place in the sun, so run, little raindrop, run. <laughs> Run, little raindrop, run. Get along, little cloud, get along. Sing, little bluebird, sing. Mr. Gloom is afraid of a song. Go away, little blackbird. Say, little bluebird. Get along. Hey, Cabby. I'm on a date with a place to run. So run, scram, blow, scat, take a powder, hit the road. I'll watch you hurry. Here's your hat. One little raindrop. Run. You were born suspicious. Surrender. Did you? Maybe the FBI could use a gal like you. Come on, my public is calling us. Hiya, Petey. How's it coming? Hello, Commissioner. My, don't you look pretty. Yeah, had to look sharp for closing night. Just outside, check the house. Stand in room only. I should have booked the kids in this show on percentage. You made money on them. I wasn't taking them myself. I'm first a friend and second an agent to all my clients. <laughs> if you must know, I was out looking at rings. Now you've gone and spoiled it. Could I see the ring? Well, I haven't got it. It's at Cartier's, but... Why couldn't you bring it? Because I'm having an inscription put on the inside. I guess you have to know everything. Okay, the inscription says to Vicky with love. We'll be together till the final curtain. It costs $2 a word, and it'll take a day and a half to inscribe. Would you like to know the price of it? Next time, I'll bring a receipt. Together to the final curtain? Did you put that in it? Hmm. Don't you like it? Oh, Dan! Ah, uh, lovers' squirrels are just like an old pair of pants. You can always patch them up. You have to be that corny. I'm sorry. Honey, you shouldn't act up like that. People get high blood pressure and carbuncles from getting excited. You shouldn't use mascara. I like your eyes plain. Hey, 
kids. Uh, how about the new show? I got some back. Is this your initial? Yeah, no. I, I, I bought it from Mac, one of the stage hands. I uh, had something in my eye. It's a woman's handkerchief. It smells of perfume, and it's got lipstick on it. <laughs> That's Max, all right. I'd recognize Shut it anyways. Shut up. You were out with Marilyn Crothers, weren't you? You probably... No, I wasn't. I just bumped into it. Didn't you ever bump into anybody? Must have been quite a collision. Oh, why am I trying to kid myself? Look, you can't convict a guy on circumstantial evidence. I did order the ring, and I did bump into Marilyn, but I swear to you, I'm a changed man. Until I... something in high heels walks by. I'm in competition with 50 million females. My ego can't take it. But, Vicky, this is the truth. The truth. You don't even suspect the meaning of the word. All right, you can take Miss Social Register slumming, but I've had enough of it. Look, Vicky, I... <laughs> Mr. Christie, you haven't changed. And he never will. Look, Miss Lane, your costume. You're on again with Mr. Christie in the next two minutes. Not in the next two centuries. Then get my understudy. Yes, Miss Lane, I get... Look, Vicky... Oh. Vicky, listen to me, will you? Daddy Look, boy, daddy boy, you'll hurt your knuckles. I'll knock you, yeah. Vicky, will you listen to me for one minute? You always have a few quarrels. You'll make it up. This one's for keeps. What do you mean? You're not going to do another show with him? Oh, would it always be the same old thing and the joke's always on me? Where's my bourbon and soda? Where does it go for that bourbon? Kentucky? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I've been there, though. A very interesting state, Kentucky. Very interesting historically. At one time, you know, they referred to it as the cradle of the West. I'll take your word for it. Yes, sir. Danny, boy, Danny. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Go away from me. We're not speaking. Such an attitude. And me, your best friend. <laughs> My best friend. I'm laughing. Her best friend. You're on her side. Three months have come and gone and still no backer for my show. I repeat, go away. <laughs> Scott, will you let me talk? I got your backer. I don't believe you. Will you go away? Who is it? Bickle and Brown. They want to put up $60,000. Bickle and Brown. Where are the contracts? Uh, well, there's... Just one little thing. It's only a small detail, a trifle. Mm -hmm. What might that be? Well, Pickle and Brown want Vicky in the show, too. Oh, no, no, never, my friend. After what she did to me, walked out on me, left me flat after all I've done for her. Oh, that's impossible. Listen, Danny, boy, you're too big a man, too big a name to hold a grudge. <laughs> Look at how ridiculous it strikes me. <laughs> Even if I were willing to forgive Miss Lane, which I am not, for your information, she is not available. She is 2,000 miles away at a place called Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies, dancing with a character named Victor Prince. For your information, I know all about that. There's the tickets. Reservations already made. And what makes you think she'd leave Victor Prince for Bickle and Brown? She's not to know anything about Bickle and Brown. You've got to make a comeback for you. <laughs> she hates me. She adores you. Now, here's what you do. You go up there, you turn on the old charm. And the old flame. Make her see what a romantic guy she walked out on. Don't mention Bickle and Brown at all. Why should I go to all that trouble? I don't want her back. I don't need her back. Well, Bickle and Brown have a funny feeling that you're washed up without her. You let them say that? Without Vicky, you're a dead turkey. Bickle and Brown said it, and now I say it. What do you say? I say go away from me. I am beginning to loathe, detest, and despise you. Blow. All right, I'm going, and the contracts are going with me. There's your plane tickets. You can do whatever you want. Bartender, give my friend another drink. And see that he gets on that plane for Lake Louise. Yes, sir. Here's a little something for your trouble. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hmm. So you're going to Lake Louise. Are you kidding? Well, don't answer that. I'm going to have another bourbon and soda, if you please. Yes, sir. I have two of them right here. Oh, thank you. They say that Lake Louise is remarkably scenic referred to constantly as the jewel of the Canadian Rockies, and rightly so, sir. Give me another drink. I can still hear you. Uh, yes, sir.
What insane and silly things we do Here is what I see before me Vividly and clear As I recall it You were in it too I had the craziest dream Last night Yes, I did I never dreamed James solid or is he solid? Of course he's solid, White Cloud, but it's that Miller groove that sends me. Sure. Imagine anybody playing a trumpet this early in the morning. You'd think they'd let a guy sleep, wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think so? Yes, sir. But it's not morning, sir. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm a little dizzy. What'd you have to turn the lights on for? Who are you? McTavish is the name, sir. I'm your valet. Oh, my valet. My what? Your valet, sir. But I haven't got a valet. Well, you have one now, sir. You hired me yesterday afternoon at precisely 4.32 p.m. But I, I don't need a valet. You thought so yesterday, sir, in the cocktail bar. Cocktail bar. Stand still, will you? I remember you. You're the bartender. Wrong tense, sir. I was. You mean you gave up your job on account of me? Well, it wasn't a very satisfactory occupation, sir. I'd only been a bartender for two days. It's all very clear to me. You took advantage of me while I was in that bar. On the contrary, sir. I was obliged to help you to the airplane. Then you prevailed upon me to accompany you as your companion. You said it was fate. Even asked me to hold your head. Airplane fate? What are you talking about? It'll all come back to you presently, sir. I hope. Where am I? 
Chateau Lake Louise, heart of the Canadian Rockies, elevation 5,670 feet. That's one little raindrop, a hit from my show. If I recollect with a modicum of accuracy, sir, the nature of your mission had to do with a certain young lady who had left you uh, horizontal, uh, uh, prone. Flat is the word. Flat is the word. But it's okay. The fog is clearing. Bickle and brown. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. <laughs> You'll pardon the levity, sir, but it does sound like a slogan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a war crime, McTavish. I'm going down and have it out with her right now. Uh, may I suggest a more subtle approach, sir? A shave, a bath, clean linen, a press suit. You can't take a lady by storm. What you need, sir, is finesse. like the Encyclopedia Britannica. Well, it all started with my Aunt Stephanie, sir. That is, it started with her will. It's become quite a burden, really. Her will? Don't tell me she died and left you all her big words. Well, it amounts to practically the same thing, sir. You see, when my Aunt Stephanie died, I was a freshman at Harvard. And in her will, she stipulated that I was to receive an allowance of $10,000 a year as long as I remained in college. Huh? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. I've been going to school now for 20 years. I graduated last month. Twenty years in one college? Oh, oh, no, sir, no, sir. I have diplomas from five. What are you doing tending bar? Well, sir, I wanted to learn about life and the present. For twenty years, I've been shut up learning about the past. Tavish, this begins to sound like a gag. You certainly look like a bartender. Really? Oh. Oh, thank you, sir, thank you. <laughs> What's the melting point of magnesium? 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, sir. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Will you use your electric razor, sir, or the brush? Brush. Recite the Turkish alphabet. Aleph, Bey, Pei, Tay, Say, Jim, Chim, Ha. Is that correct, sir? How do I know it? it? Sounds correct. It sounds impossible. Oh, well, sir, my whole life has been impossible. You see, I know everything. What's wrong with that? Well, I confess, though I am a master of romance languages, I'm scarcely a master of romance. Bachelor of Arts, yes, but awfully tired of being a bachelor. Now, keep your chin up, McTavish. Yes, sir. Both of them? Yes, sir. Come on, Harry. After a first performance like this, a little celebration is in order. Come on up here. Oh, Maitre D. Well, monsieur. Martini, please. I'll make it two. Oh, no, nothing that prosaic. After an occasion like this, it demands something special. I'll make you a brand yellow victim. No, really, a martini is all. Martini, you'll adore it. Well, how was it? Too fast? Too slow? As usual, Harry. Too terrific. Would you say that I was ready? I would say, sir, you are practically perfect. Uh, just one more detail, sir. Something you bought in Chicago between planes. It's an engagement ring, I think. Together till... 
The inscription's only half finished. It was just one hour between planes. Well, I'll attend to that later. Yes, sir. Now, sir, you are to say I believe nothing about Bickle and Brown. You're right there with the old psychology. Am I? Oh. McTavish, you've made yourself indispensable. You may stay on as my valet. Oh, thank you, sir. And now to meet Miss Vicky Lane. Yes, sir. Wish me luck. Waiting, weedy, weaky. Translation. I came, I saw, I conquered. Vicky. I'm on now. Well done, my good man. Now, let me see. Nutmeg? Epsom? Yes, I think you have everything. Thank you very much. Oh, children, you don't know what's in store for you. This is the nectar of the gods. I got the recipe straight from the Sultan of Indo. He's the richest man in the world. One sip and you'll feel the same way. I'm sorry, Victor, but uh, I've got to go knock out an arrangement for hell on Now, look, Harry, it'll only take a few minutes. Sit down. No, I'm afraid that's not going to knock me out first. I'll see you then. <laughs> the chopping a knife used to mean a strange man would arrive, remember? Just a man. The man who adores you. Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, Dan, what are you doing way up here in Canada? Me, I was just passing by. I dropped up for my health. You know, it's supposed oh. to be a great place for your nerves. I uh, hope I wasn't interrupting anything. Oh, no, I was just kissing my future husband. Mr. Prince and I are engaged. Engaged? What do you mean? Well, engaged to be married. Isn't it exciting? Oh, yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, uh, oh, you two ought to know each other. Mr. Prince, Mr. Christie. Hello. How do you do? You're Christie, the singer, aren't you? Yeah. Why don't we all sit down? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, Gordon, have a drink, won't you? Uh, no, no thanks. No, he's going to have some of this. No, no, thanks. I'll have a large tomato juice, please. Very good, sir. With Worcestershire sauce? Yeah. Pantro? Mm -hmm. Have some? One dash? Victor's making a special drink to celebrate our engagement. Oh. Yes, darling, and it's something to celebrate. I think we'll be held over. Uh, no, no, darling. I mean us. Oh, oh, I thought you meant... <laughs> well, what does it matter? We hope to make a success of both. Been doing any hunting or trapping around here? I hear it's a great country for wolves. Victor and I have been much too busy to indulge in outdoor sports. So are you two really going to get married, or is this a publicity stunt or something? Oh, I have the pretty little license right in this pocket. Maybe you'll be here for the wedding. Oh, I like it. I love weddings. I save up all my old shoes to throw at them. Ah, and now, the pièce de résistance. Voilà. Oh. <laughs> it's not supposed to do that. McTavish! McTavish! Yes, sir? What are you doing? I'm unpacking. Your bags arrived just a little while ago. Well, repack. We're not staying. Very well, sir. And send a wire to the commissioner. You remember my agent? Yes, sir. But don't you think that would be a job for your secretary? Why, what? I haven't got a secretary. Oh, but you have, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Christie. Exactly who are you? My name is Rosita. It would be. Rosita Murphy. Murphy? I am your secretary. What? That's quite right, Mr. Christie. You hired her in Detroit. She was at the souvenir counter. You were having some little troubles, and I fixed for you. And what were the little troubles? You want to send your photograph to little girls, but you didn't want her to know who it was from. What did you do? Well, I sent to her one of me. And then you decided to become my secretary. Uh -uh -uh. I didn't decide it. You did. You said it was fate. Fate. She's in again. Well, I'm very sorry, Miss Murphy. We're leaving. You can go as far as Detroit with McTavish and myself. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Christie, you don't have to take me back. I have money. I'd like very much to stay behind here and study these glaciers. Yes, sir. I don't want to go back either. I like to hear. I think I stay too behind, then study. Or something. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, well, you can't do a thing like that, Miss Murphy. Why can't I? I can get a job from the hotel. 
I can do lots of things for an hotel. Murphy, that's a crazy idea. I got you into this and I'll get you out of it. Oh, Mr. Christie is right. You have to go back to Detroit. This is no place for you, Miss Murphy. Are you making up my mind for me? I'll make it up myself. I'm not telling you what you want to do. No, no, no. We're just saying what we think is the best thing for you to do, Miss Murphy. Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. If I hear once more, I scream. Oh, well, that is your name, isn't it? Yes, Rosita Murphy. Oh, an assumed name, of course. You're certainly not Irish. Oh, no? My father was Irish. Patrick Murphy. My mother, Brazilian. Twenty years ago, my father ran away from my mother. Two years ago, I come up north to look for my father. But you, S of A, she's full of Patrick Murphys. Look, Murphy, we haven't time to listen to your life story. McTavish can do as he pleases, but you're going back to Detroit. But Coming Mr. along, and I'll arrange for your but reservations. But, Mr. Christie... You're my secretary, aren't you? Yeah, I guess I am, yes. Then I'm the boss, and you'll do as I say. Come on. Now, believe me, Murphy, you'll be better off back there. This is no place for a little girl all alone. Have you ever been a little girl all alone in Detroit? Now, Danny knows best. And frankly, I don't think you'll ever make a very good secretary. Paging Mr. Winters. Mr. Winters. Mail. Hmm. Now, you see, Murph. Aha. Uh -huh. I'd make a better pals, huh? Hello, Dan. Oh, hello, Vicky. Uh. I don't believe I... Oh, you two haven't met. Uh, Miss Murphy, Miss Lane. How do you do, Miss Murphy? How do you do, I'm sure. I'm fine, thanks. Miss Murphy's my secretary. Your, uh, secretary? Hmm, secretary. I see. Mr. Christie, I just called your room. A man informed me that he was your valet. Oh, yes, my valet, my secretary. I'm traveling light, but I manage. I can see you're roughing it. Goodbye, Mr. Christie. Nice for you to make my acquaintance, Miss Lane. You're in luck, Mr. Christie. I managed to get two reservations for you. There's a cancellation. Huh? Your reservations, I have them. Oh, well, uh, forget it. I just want to see if you could get it. We had a bet you couldn't. Thanks a lot. Come on, Murph. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Christie's here now. Tavish, what are you doing? Well, those are your bags, sir. I've packed them. Well, unpack them. We're not leaving. You know, I would suggest you're lying down, sir. It'll quiet your mind. Hello, hello. Who's on the phone? It's the general, sir. The colonel. Uh, uh, that Mr. Commissioner from New York. Oh. Hello. Take care of the bags. The bags. Fine. Yeah. She's engaged to Victor Prince. <laughs> but she's jealous of me. Listen, I didn't send you up there to make her jealous. When a woman's jealous, she's mad. And we don't want a mad woman for the show. But you don't understand. If she's jealous, she loves me, just like you said. It's only a matter of time. Listen, Danny boy, time's are wasted. Make love to a donor antagonizer. We're putting on a review, not a prize fight. Who's we? Me and B and B. Yeah, Bickle and Brown, they're right here in the office with me now. Tell those two ugly mugs to keep their shirts on. I know what I'm doing. He says love and kisses, and how are you? <laughs> Fine. How do you do, Mr. Bickle? How do you do, Mr. Brown? Relax, you don't seem to understand. Everything's perfect. Goodbye. Wayne, Dee Vicky. I came, I saw, I conquered. <sighs> Beautiful Lake Louise. Well, here I am, ready to go to work. Murphy, take a letter. Good neighbors. Is that what a secretary wears in Brazil? Why? You don't like my outfits? I think it's a knockdown. Well, what good is it if there's not a Mardi Gras in town? You wait till I get my brothers. I'll show you. I wish she get some brothers. Brothers? Casey, Michael, come on, all both of you. Come on, bye. Hello, come on, bye. My brothers. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You brought your brothers with you. Huh? No, no, no. You. You brought them. You pick them up in St. Paul. You say, come along. And they come along. 
Well, there's always room for two more. Two? Do you think I have only two brothers? What kind of family is that? Shani, Kelly, Afonso. Como vai, senhor? Como vai? Salve ele. And Patrick Jr. Dad! Como vai? Six more Murphys. My brother had the big talent. Pessoal, pega o João e vamos fazer uma batucada aqui pro seu amizade. Faz o problema. Look, Murphy, they're very cute, but what'll I do with them? You do nothing. You just listen. I do it. Watch me. Do you like Brazilian music? I love it. You love it? You got it. Mm-hmm. Que é o teatro no Catiúdio Catiúdio é um trem que vai, que vai me levar perto de alguém Pois numa estação que passa o teatro no Catiúdio Eu vou saltar, se vou, se vou mesmo se o trem não parar E você pega o trem na pensão, vai no station às três horas e tal Pouco a pouco vai saindo da capital Toma um cafezinho e tira uma pestana E quando os remenegues lá em Carolana Pro americano, trem vai em todo bar Vamos lá, vamos lá, vamos lá, tchau, tchau, em todo bar Para o brasileiro está querendo sambar Esquivo, para, vá, 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 vá Esse que vá, me esquivo, vá, 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 vá Pode ser santista, vou rotear, tá no cadere o ar, vou, 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 vou encontrar Com certo alguém que lá me espera na estação, haha, com certo alguém Aí o Sul Company fez, pois tem cara de sponsor 3 Quero chegar, pois sei que lá vai ser pra lá de bom Só chata no cachucho, ando chucho, me rola Chata no cachata, no cachata, no cachucho O chata no cachata, no cachata, no cachucho Vicky, where are you? Here I am. Guess who I just saw downstairs. Just guess. I've been bursting to tell you all the way up in the elevator. If you mean Dan Christie, don't burst. It's not worth it. Oh, you've seen him? Yes. But where do you think I saw him? On an outgoing plane, I hope. No, in the French room on the mezzanine buying a dinner gown. Phoebe, darling, nothing Dan Christie could do would interest me or surprise me. Oh, but you should have seen the gown. All white with a little draping here, a split skirt here, nothing here. I'd like to have it myself, only I'm not the midriff type. Or am I? Don't worry, Mr. Christie will undoubtedly find a midriff type for it.
Well. Well, do you say come in? <laughs> well. <laughs> Christy bought this for me to eat in. Oh, he did? Oh. What do you think? Well, I think Mr. Christie is a very extravagant man. And you shouldn't call him Christie without the mister. He calls me Murph without the miss. He says he gets a kick out of the Murph, so I kick back with Christy. Oh, I see. Well, after all, it is your business, isn't it? <laughs> Not mine. But I want my business to be your business. Don't you like Rosita just a little? <laughs> well, I... No? I, um, I think you're a very foolish girl, Miss Murphy. You are heading definitely for a great disillusionment. This man, Christy, Mr. Christy, to sink into the vernacular, you are just leading with your chin. Just so you like my chins, huh? <laughs> well... <laughs> you do like me a little, huh? Miss Murphy, I... I happen to understand the psychology of human basic factors and things. Now, you do not. Mm -hmm. No, you are just a little girl, a, a little girl. I, on the other hand, well, my whole way of life was abruptly changed by the inheritance of a goodly sum of toothpaste stock. You must be pretty smart. Oh. What did you do with toothpaste? Uh, well, it made me more or less independent, so I deserted my books in order to learn from life itself. I will help you. I want to find out just what makes people tick. Oh, and do you know now what make them tick? Oh, well, I, I'm still learning, Miss Murphy. Look, Maktavish, hmm? you are one smart man. <laughs> <laughs> when I first meet you, I think what a little in the dumbbell side, you know. Not really. You know, I must say definitely that I felt just the same way about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> what do you mean? It means we click. Oh, does it? Yes. Oh, does it? Yes. Oh, does it? Well, I, I have a feeling that Mr. Christie is waiting downstairs for you. Oh, I know, I know. You like the dress he got me? It's all right, yes, it's all right, yes. What there is of it. You're right. It needs some beads, some flowers, fruits, bubbles, knacks, nicks. I have an idea. Yeah? Give me ten bucks. Ten bucks? Yes, ten dollars. I pay you back. Well, I, I know, but ten dollars... Ten dollars, please. I don't know what it is, boy, but you got something. <laughs> For two, Mr. Christie? No, thanks. Later. We're going to dance a little first. Very well, sir. And she said, well, why didn't you? I uh, hope you don't mind dancing so close. I think it's so much cozy. But when you dance a rumba, she's not supposed to be cozy. Look out, kitty's got you. Uh, I show you how to rumba. Follow me. Like this. See? You see? Mm -hmm. see? <laughs> this is not the rumba. I know. It is now. It's okay by me, big boys. <laughs> Glad you like it. Mm, I love it. I never danced cozy before. Um, how about a drink? A drink? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everybody. Oh, hello, old man. Mr. Prince, this is my secretary, Miss Murphy. How do you do? I'm sure. How do you do? And Miss Lane, you already know. Miss Phoebe Gray and, uh, oh, there's Mr. Harry James yeah. and Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Jeepers at the gelatin by the same name. Mr. Oh, Christie oh. and Miss, uh, Murphy. Mm -hmm. So you decided to stay on for a while, eh, Christie? Well, it's such a beautiful place, I just couldn't tear myself away. There's something about Lake Louise that just gets you. Yes, I see what you mean. Well, we're going to have some wine, too. Oh, but... join us, won't you? Well, thank you, but... Oh, please, I insist. stunning gown you're wearing, Miss Murphy. Is it Harry Carnegie's? I should say not. Christy bought it for me. 
Miss Murphy's quite a kidder. Is the Irish in me? <laughs> Irish, eh? I had an uncle named Patrick Murphy. Maybe we're related. Maybe. If he was ever in Brazil. No, I don't think he ever got out of Brooklyn. I don't think that's in Brazil. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Miss Murphy has quite a sense of humor. She's a cinch for my next show. Yes, a barrel of laughs. I'm glad you think so. People don't realize how difficult it is to cast a musical. Beautiful girls are a dime a dozen. They can dance like a dream and sing like a lark. But when you find one with a sense of humor, then you've got something worth hanging on to. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to go to the powder room. I'll go with you. My face is a mess, too. <laughs> What's cooking, Phoebe? I don't know what's cooking, but I know someone's stewing. I don't know why, but I think I'm going to like you people. You are being so nice to me. It's strictly unintentional, I assure you. Thank you. I wish I was a blonde. Or knew it looks good. Maybe I should bleach my hair. Oh, you're <laughs> frightfully witty, Miss Murphy, but my hair is naturally blonde. Well, shuts my mouth. Don't breathe it to a soul and nobody would know the difference. Look, I don't know what you're after, but you don't stand a chance with Dan Christie, and you're leading with your chin. <laughs> Everybody tell me that today. What's the matter with my chin? Mm, I think you know what I'm talking about. Maybe I do. Do you? Certainly. What's your trouble, Miss Lane? You got tough time finding a boy? Of course not. I have Mr. Prince. He and I are engaged, and he gave me this. Hmm. Is that a diamond? Yes. Does the size of it startle you? Yes. In Brazil, we throw that kind of way. We dig them up this big. Don't change the subject. Now, look, I don't know your relations with Dan Christie, but... We are no relations. He's just my boss. Oh, then it's only natural that you're head over heels in love with him? Love? <laughs> don't make me laugh. Not in the head and not in the heels. Nowhere. You're sure? You're, uh, quite sure? Positively. I know him since last night. He's what you call just a push-up. Uh, you mean a pick-up? That's it. He picked me up in Detroit and put me down here. Just between me and you. I think he has some things up his sleeves. You uh, think so? Mm-hmm. Uh, what things? He say I must stay here with him. And he say I'm giving him a big fever. Fever? Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean doing him a big favor. That's it, yes. Oh, well, tell me more, Rosita. Tell me everything. You know, you're beginning to grow on me. <laughs> you know, Kia. I wonder what's keeping Vicky and your charming secretary. I hope they've hit it off all right. What worries me is who hit first. Phoebe, go to the powder room. If they're still alive, bring them back, will you? Even if they're mangled beyond recognition? <laughs> oh, Vicky. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Murphy, yes. would you care to get some air? Well, I never say yes so quick. Let me think. Yes, if it's okay with my boss. Can I get the air? You're off duty, Murphy. Hmm? Excuse it, please. They make a nice couple. Would you like to get some air? No, thank you. I have a headache. Well, it's close in here. This will fix it up. No, it'll be all right. Thank you. Well, we might as well put all that nice lake air to some use. Go ahead, Vicky. It'll clear your head. You're, um, not afraid, I... Don't be silly. Excuse us, please. You'll pardon me, please. You'll excuse us, too, please. Yes, Miss Gray, please. Hmm. Strange interlude. Well, here I sit again. Phoebe the Wallflower. With no man of her own. <laughs> it isn't because they can't see me. I am lit up like a flaming torch. I think I'll buzz about a bit. 
There must be an unattached man around somewhere. Hmm? <laughs> of course, that ain't exactly ladylike. Are you kidding? Give this four stars. Look at that moon. That's the kind they write about, isn't it? Yes, it's too bad your secretary isn't handy. There are some lovely places around here where you could uh, dictate. I take it you don't quite approve of Murphy. Oh, but I do. I find her frankness most refreshing. Frankness? Say, what is this friendship between you two? Oh. We just had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk in the powder room. You know, as girls will. I see. Incidentally, Rosita told me how fond she was of you. Yeah. It's a fondness that finally blossomed into the real thing. Must have been one of those blossoms that bloom overnight. You only met her 24 hours ago in Detroit. Oh, you haven't changed a bit, and neither is your acting. You're still the biggest ham and the biggest phony that ever drew a breath. Do meu coração, marco o compasso do meu grande amor. Na alegria bate muito forte, na tristeza bate fraco porque sente dor. O tiki 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 taque do meu coração, marco o compasso do atrás de ver. É o relógio de uma existência e pouco a pouco vai morrendo de tanto sofrer. Tiki 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 taque do meu coração, marco o compasso do meu grande amor. Na alegria bate muito forte, na tristeza bate fraco porque sente dor. O tiki 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 taque do meu coração, marco o compasso do atrás de ver. É o relógio de uma existência e pouco a pouco Pouco vai morrendo de tanto sofrer Meu coração já bate diferente Dando sinal do fim da mocidade O seu pulsar é um ser constante Fiquei muito amor na vida com sinceridade Às vezes eu penso que o tic tac É um aviso do meu coração Que já cansado de tanto sofrer Não quer que eu tenha nesta vida mais desilusão Um tic 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 tac do meu coração Foi o compasso do meu grande amor Na alegria bate muito forte Na tristeza bate fraco porque sente dor Um tic 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 tac do meu coração Foi o compasso de um atroz viver é o relógio de uma existência e pouco a pouco vai morrendo de tanto sofrer Meu coração já bate diferente, dando sinal do fim da mocidade O seu pulsar é um solução constante, de quem muito amor na vida com sinceridade Às vezes eu penso que o tic tac é um aviso do meu coração Que já cansado de tanto sofrer, não quer que eu tenha nesta vida mais desilusão O tic 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 tac do meu coração, porque o compasso do meu grande amor Na alegria bate muito forte, na tristeza bate fraco porque sente dor O tic 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 tac do meu coração Marco o compasso de um atrás de viver É o relógio de uma existência Pouco a pouco vai morrendo de tanto sofrer O tic-tac vai tocando no meu coração O tic-tac, o tic-tac, o tic-tac, o tic-tac, o tic-tac do meu coração Murphy, you look ravishing in that gown. Well, I feel absolutely undressed, like a strip squizzer. <laughs> <laughs> well, look what I found.
Pardon me, I present Mr. McTavish. This is Victor Prince, Mr. and Mrs. Jeepers. Oh, I think we met before in New York. You're, uh, you're toothpaste, aren't you? Am I? Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course, in a way. Uh, yes. I'm jealous. Really, I believe it. Oh. I mean, I thought I'd recognize you. <laughs> oh, and this is Miss Murphy. It is Murphy, isn't it? Yes. Mr. McTavish, Miss Murphy. Well... Well, um, ten dollars, and you did very well. This has nothing to do with your doubles crossing, yes? Oh, yes. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 I'm afraid we know each other. What you are afraid from? What you doing with McTavish? Where did you find him? No, oh, out there. <laughs> yeah, put him back. Oh. He's mine. Oh. We are going steadily. Really, this is most embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. Why don't you hang a sign around his neck? Private property. I'll hang a rope around his neck and maybe I pull it. Oh, oh impulsive. <laughs> impulsive. Repulsive? Do you think she'll look any gooder? Oh, I get it all now. It's very plain. But if you came 3,000 miles to try and break up my marriage, well, you're getting exactly nowhere, so you might as well pack up and leave. I'll leave. Good. As soon as you're ready. Pretty? Oh, your conceit is colossal. I can see now that you're still convinced that all you need is a romantic backdrop, a little sentimental dialogue, a dash of remorse, and I'll be hopping into your lap again. Well, that was the general idea. But there must be a good reason why I got all that trouble. I'll say there's a good reason. Like all selfish, dishonest people, you need someone to take advantage of. Well, Mr. Christie, you can get yourself a new rag doll. Even if I weren't in love with Victor, I wouldn't get back on that little merry-go-round of yours. Does that convince you? Well, I can't say that it does, chum. Now, if you'll relax and listen. All right, I'll listen. Oh, good morning, Rosita. You'll have to pardon my appearance, please. Why don't you tell me you was a millionaire? Well, what are you talking about? I, I'm not a millionaire. I know, just a lot of toothpaste. But it made you rich, no? Oh, nothing of the kind rich. Why, I'm only worth in the neighborhood of, say, uh, $600,000. That's a good enough neighborhood for me. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to pardon me, won't you? I'm laying out Mr. Christie's clothes. Wait till I'm finished laying you out. My word, haven't you finished yet? Not till you told me what you see in me that you don't see in that Phoebe woman. Oh, now, Rosita, Miss Phoebe. Why, she's just another interesting character in my studies. You want to find out what makes her tick, I suppose. Well, I suppose so, yes. Why don't you listen to me? I'm a chicken all the time. Are you? Really? Yes. <laughs> listen. I'm listening. Am I chicken? I think so. You think so? How's that, brother? Oh, I think I'm ticking now. Oh. Hmm, before breakfast, too. Yeah. Oh. You like it better than ping pong? I'm afraid I was a little carried away, sir. Quite a distance, I'd say. And you, sir, may I ask about you and last night? Any progress, sir? Oh, everything's fine. She wants me to go away and she never wants to see me again. Oh, how nice. How very nice, sir. Although that hardly sounds like progress, sir. McTavish, any time a woman never wants to see you again, that means she can't live without you. I'm happy to report that everything is progressing according to plan. Really, sir, really, your scientific approach to a woman's heart, it's just amazing, sir. Thank you, McTavish. What is the next step? The next step is the tenderness routine. I send her all the things she loves. Remind me to send her some long stem roses. Long stem roses, yes. Yeah, sir. the longer the better, preferably three or four feet in length. She's a sucker for roses. If the stems are long enough, it makes her cry. <laughs> I think I understand, sir. I had a very interesting summer extension course at one time in horticulture. And I raised roses, ooh, six feet tall with buds about one foot in diameter, sir. Well, I'm afraid we haven't got time for you to raise these, McTavish. They were salmon colored, sir. For the coffee, hmm? Coffee, too, yes, sir. There's one thing that worries me, though. The aphids and mildew and no, blank. not about the roses, about Miss Lane. Oh. After I give her the ring, how am I going to tell her about New York and Bickle and Brown? Oh, I wonder. Oh, dear, that will be inordinately difficult. Sir. Difficult? It's impossible. Sir, why not take her to New York and let her find out for herself? Why say anything to her about it at all? McTavish, you've got something there. After all, if I don't tell her, who will? Who will? <laughs> Fishing? Any luck? No, but you should have seen the one that got away. 
What are you doing with those? Did you throw these out into the hall? Yes. But why? They're beautiful. He sent them. Oh, shall I throw them back? I don't care what you do with them. Oh, how I hate that pan. They won't fit in anything. I know I've got long stems myself. I know exactly how they feel. I said I hated him. Who, Victor? No, Dan Christie. Dan Christie? In person, held over by popular demand. All made up and ready to go on. My, my, baby, aren't you the little flower girl? Those that make you cry? You know, I think you might find a customer in the lobby. I get it right away. I'm a quick study. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's a surprise. And no fair peeking. You may go, my good man. Very good, sir. Will you get out of here? What do you think you're doing? Now, don't tell me you've forgotten our anniversary. Uh, what anniversary? The anniversary of our first kiss. Oh. Don't you remember the camping trip in the Adirondacks? In exactly five seconds, it'll be 7.15. At that moment a year ago, we kissed for the first time. Three, four, five. If you don't leave this room at once... Shh, 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 shh. We mustn't speak that way in front of June. Oh. All right. I'll call Victor. Oh, you wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? Hello? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Hello, Victor. Will you come over right away, please? Yes, right away. Thank you. May I uh, make a suggestion? This little invention works a lot better if you put the plug in. So, how would you care to try again? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Yes. Hello, darling? Uh-huh, this is Vicky. Victor, I'm lonesome. Uh-huh. Do I? Oh, of course I do, sweet. Terribly, terribly. Huh? Uh-huh, all alone. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All alone, right here in my room. You will? One minute? I don't know whether I can wait that long. But I'll try. He's coming right over. Can hardly wait. I gotta give you credit. I didn't think you'd do it. I can't figure it out. Well, figure it out in your own room, will you? Of course I could order something for Victor. A big piece of ham, perhaps. Now look, Dan, he's only three doors away. He's gonna be here any minute. Well, then we'll eat in the dining room. No. Look, I'm not gonna eat dinner on our anniversary alone. Dan, he'll be here any minute. We... Victor! Well, what do you want me to do? Shh. You can leave by the window. But that's a 20-foot drop. There's a fire escape just outside. I may break my neck. Good, but do it quietly. Hmm? Vicky. Vicky. Oh, Vicky, darling. Come in, Victor. Vicky. Victor, darling. Don't move. You're a Picasso. Mm -hmm. A painting. Oh. No, no painter could capture that creamy skin, that sky blueness of the eyes. And if he could, it would be a masterpiece, a classic. And it would hang in my heart. Uh, darling, you don't have to propose to me anymore. Oh, Vicky, your loneliness has made me so happy. Uh, what do you mean? Well, you phoned me and not somebody else. It proves that our engagement was not just the, well, the surface kind. Frankly, up to this minute, it hadn't meant very much to me. Victor. Well, it never meant full possession. Hmm? And I've known all along that I caught you on the rebound. There was once a fellow by the name of Dan Christie. Once, but no more. My only hope was that you'd forget him. That you'd learn to love me so much that no feeling for him would remain. That's just what it is, Victor. And when you phoned me, I knew my moment had come. I knew that he had left your heart. He is gone, isn't he? There is nothing left. Nothing. At last, you're completely mine. <laughs> well, sweetheart, what's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. 
Vicky, darling. No, not now, Victor. Well, can you think of a better time? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, I can. Vicky, are you putting me off again? I couldn't stand that. Oh, my angel. Uh, Victor. Victor. Yes. Yes. I'm hungry. It's past dinner time, and look what I've ordered just for you. Rainbow trout. I loathe trout, and you know it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'd forgotten. Well, we can phone up for something else. Food doesn't interest me in the slightest. Well, how about a drink? At least you could pour me one. Why, of course, sweet. Ah, Tokay. The wine of gypsies and romance. I hope that's why you ordered it. Oh, it's just a cheap brand, but it's all I could get. To my little gypsy, who dances and plays on the strings of my heart. <laughs> May she never roam. <laughs> what was that? Oh, nothing. Just a beetle. <laughs> Victor. Yes, darling? Let's take a walk. A walk? Uh -huh. But it's so cozy here. It's congested. I, I mean, the air, it's stuffy. Well, we'll just open the window. Oh, no, no. Well, why not? It might be too cold. Oh, nonsense, Vicky. It's a balmy evening. Why, well, the windows are already open. Yes. Isn't it great to be alive? And isn't it great to be alone and in love? Vicky, what on earth is the matter with you? Oh. <laughs> I can see the mood you're in. You're teasing me. Oh. Oh, Vicky, what is this? You want me here because you're lonesome, then you try to get rid of me. You want me to come, you want me to go. Now, what do you want me to do? I'll tell you, Victor. What, Vicky? Let's play gin rummy. Yeah, gin rummy? Are you kidding? No, I love gin rummy. Oh, Vicky, I wish you'd say you loved me with as much feeling. Uh, I do love you, Victor. Do you, Vicky? Yes. I, say, why are we whispering? Well, I wasn't whispering. Well, of course you were. Oh, Vicky, are you sure you care for me more than you cared for Christy? Oh, I never really cared about him at all. All he had was a terrific nuisance value. Oh, I detest, despise, and loathe the man. It isn't just because he jilted you. Jilted me? Are you crazy? I jilted him, he didn't jilt me. All right, all right, I believe you. What I can't understand is how you ever got mixed up with such a crude, noisy extrovert. Well, he's just a dead-end kid. A miserable brat. Well, his personality is just a surface one. I realize he's a self-made man, but did he have to stop so soon? Let's face it, he has nothing on the ball mentally. When he has his hat blocked, I think he leaves his head in it. <laughs> it baffles me what I ever saw in him. Yes, whatever possessed you, Vicky? You couldn't have been impressed by his name. He's not that famous. Well, he's not even a good singer. He's just a puffed-up third-rate tenor. <laughs> third-rate tenor? What do you mean, you... Well, what are you doing here? What's he doing here? Him? I don't know. You, you don't know? Oh, yes, you do. I see it all now. That's why you shushed me. That's why you whispered. That's why you wanted me to play gin rummy. Oh, but you don't be ridiculous. You're ridiculous. How can I be any more ridiculous than you've already made me, sticking that man behind the curtain and letting me make love to you? Well, darling, I knew he was there all the time, but, well, I was trying to get rid of him. Well, why didn't you let me in on it? I didn't know he was there. You just said you did. Well, well I didn't know it at first. It's all very complicated, darling. I'll say it's complicated. Say there's a red four going to red five. Yes. I mean, no. Fine fiancé you turned out to be. Of all the dishonest, insincere females, you take the cake. The cake! And you take the ring! Now things aren't complicated, are they? Oh! Darling, that man is here again. Hey! Now, why didn't you leave by the fire escape as I asked you to? Look, no fire escape. Well, a gentleman would have jumped. Look, sweetheart. Oh, get out, get out. I've been trying to get in this room, but men keep whizzing, but... Oh, 
What's the matter, honey top? Baby. Hmm? Do me a favor, will you? Sure I will, honey, anything. If I ever even look at either one of them again, I want you to give me the swiftest kick. I will, darling. <laughs> to me on your hands and knees, huh? I am not. Mm, getting cold, too. Oh, no, Dan. I, I couldn't sleep. I, I was taking a walk. Me too. It's awfully dark out, isn't it? Sit down. Have a cigarette. Oh, I'll sit. I have no idea of the time. Gee, my wife stopped. It's about four o'clock in the morning. Really? Uh, I told Elijah just now. I wasn't taking a walk. I, I was looking for something. Oh? I was looking for your ring. I hope you can find it. I found it. With eight or six bellboys. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm sorry I got so mad tonight, but I... Well, that's all right. You should have thrown me out of the window along with the ring. I thought Victor was a world's champion heel, but... <laughs> meet the new champ. Well, as long as I have to choose between two heels, I... I might as well pick the one I love, huh? That is, if, if you still feel the same way as you did about me. After the way I acted. Do you? Oh. She lost it. Here it is. Hold out your left hand. Oh, oh left. left hand. Oh. Gosh, there's a lot of things I ought to say, but... Well, Victor said them all so much better. <laughs> he put on a pretty good act, didn't he? Well, he's a hard man to follow. Oh, Danny. You don't have to say anything. There's one thing that still stands between us. What? Do you promise to get this all our fixed here? Oh, promise. And Dan, you'll always be honest with me, won't you? Sure. From now on, just call me straight as a die, Christy. That funny sound you hear is me turning over a new leaf. There's one other thing I ought to tell you. I should have told you when I first got here. That you missed me something awful, huh? Sure, but... <laughs> Danny, let's get away from everybody. Let's go upstairs and pack and catch the first plane out in the morning. Swell. You know, even in the dark, you look terrific. You kind of glow or something. I can't get over it. Do you mean I'm going to have a chance to do this all the rest of my life? That's a general idea. Yahoo! Don't shush me. Yahoo! Wake everybody up. I'll wake the whole cockeyed world. Yahoo! Good morning, sir. That moron woke you up, too, I see, eh? I'm the moron, McTavish, oh, and what's yeah. more, congratulations in order. Weenie, Weedy, Vicky. I came, I saw, and I got her. Not really. Not really. Isn't that splendid, sir? Maritally and commercially? That is to say, she's going to do the show, too, eh? Oh, she doesn't know about that yet. Oh. But you better get packed, because we're leaving on the first plane in the morning. Oh, are we? Where for? We're going on a honeymoon. Then we're going to get married. Oh. Aren't you a little mixed, sir? Yes, I am a little mixed up, but I love it. <laughs> Here's my phone. Uh, what is the destination? I hadn't thought about that yet. Well, if you're going to do the show, it would have to be New York. Well, I guess it'll have to be New York. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, darling. Where? I was just going to ask you the same thing. How about New York? Sure, New York's a wonderful place for a honeymoon. Oh, Danny, why not be real old-fashioned and go to Niagara Falls? Ah, Niagara Falls is corny. New York's our town. Manhattan in the spring. Remember Washington Square where we met? Doesn't it give you a lump in the throat just to think about it? Oh, 
<laughs> yes, but you know how we both love beautiful scenery. I don't need any scenery as long as I've got you along. Oh, all right, darling, you're the boss. New York it is. Okay. 8.30 in the morning, it's a date. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. McTavish. Yes, sir? Like the travel agent, tell him I want two tickets to New York in the morning. Very good, sir. I'm checking out, Miss Lane. We're checking in. Pickle and Brown's the name. Be a bee, well, well Miss Lane. Yeah. And the commissioner. What on earth are you doing here? Well, well, are you going someplace? Back to the big town. Oh, you'll never regret it. What a part you've got. Is it fat? Yes, and if I was a young girl and pretty, I'd play the part myself. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, Commissioner. Christie's a smart boy. Smart? Yeah, he said he'd get you in his next show, and he got you. <laughs> Vicky, let me explain. This is a great setup. Yeah, and we thought he couldn't swing you by himself, so we come out to help. But there's nothing left for us to do now. <laughs> Look, let me explain. It explains itself. Oh, what a performance you two will give. But it'll never top the one he's just given. What that? Huh? Huh? What did you say? Straight as a die, Christy. I should have smelled a rat a long time ago, or at least one of Bickle and Brown's cheap tricks. Uh, what is she saying? I'll translate for you. Vicky Lane is not available for you or for Dan Christie or for Dan Christie's show. But I'll give him one performance right now I'll never forget. Uh, don't worry, fellas. I'll fix everything. What's Dan Christie's room number? 206. Uh, shall I... Christie, I've got something to tell you. Not now, Murphy. But Christie... Not now, Murphy. Danny! Danny boy. Danny boy. Danny boy. Commissioner, what in the... Bickle and Brown are downstairs. They met Vicky. And she's so mad. That's just something I got to tell you. Bickle and Brown, you're half with if you didn't bring them here, did you? They brought me. They shanghaied me. They were getting impatient. They spoiled the beans. Now she'll think it's all a gag to get her back in the show. Oh, but surely you are smart enough to... Sure, just a little bit too smart. I'm licked, boys and girls. She'll never think I was more interested in her than I was in the show. She knows me too well. It's that honeymoon in New York that cooked me good. Here are the tickets. She'll never go back now. Get enough for all of us to go back to New York. I want to get out of this place as soon as possible. Dan. 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 Dan! Let me see. You don't have to explain anything. I'm through with you, Dad Christie. I've stood for your lies long enough. But if you listen... I won't listen. This is final. And there's your ring. Ah, oh, lovebird. How is the June bride feel? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Look, people in California don't wear those clothes. Haven't you got slacks? California, what are you talking about? Mr. Christie told me to get honeymoon tickets to California. Look, could it only be for you and him? Maybe I pulled boners. Did... Did you buy tickets to California? Sure he did, and I got to witness. Pessoal, é ou não é verdade que vocês andam se desmilinguindo por aqui? They say yes, California. They would. Okay, I got more. Alan, Sandra, and Victor. Congratulations. 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 Very really happy to see you. California, here I come. Congratulations, old boy. The best man won. Thanks. Well, your backers have gone back. Gone huh? back? Huh? What? Are you kidding? The angels have flown. We are now leaving beautiful Lake Louise. So what? We'll put the show on ourselves. Can we raise 60 grand? Well, I got 5,000. You can count on me for five. I've saved a thousand. You can have that. I'll raise that too. I had beads and bubbles. Victor, how about you? Hmm. 
I hate to say this, but we're still $47,000 short. Oh. oh, what can we do? Mr. Christie, you must leave immediately for the airport. Very well, McTavish. Toothpaste. Hmm? Yes, toothpaste by the bottles. In my language, that's plenty beaucoup. McTavish has? Six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand dollars? All in toothpaste. I'd better start squeezing, huh? No, no, leave this to me. <laughs> Anything wrong, sir? Oh, well, McTavish, old pal, we're putting on the show ourselves. <laughs> oh, not really. Yes, oh, indeed. what a happy idea, <laughs> yes. It shows such a commendable spirit of brotherhood. Uh, well, we knew you'd like the idea. We're all chipping in something. And if we're willing to back our talent with our own money, we must be pretty sure of a success, huh? Well, really, Miss Lane, you don't have to convince me of the artistic merit of this assembly. Well, thank you very much. You'd better put the show on, you'd hire us, wouldn't you? I would indeed, sir. Every last one of you. Well, oh, you're welcome to feed the kitty, you know. You're one of us, and in return, we'll give you a small piece of the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you indeed. Thank you. What would you suggest? Well, all we need is 47,000. Hmm. Dollars? Yes. yes. Dollars. From me? Yes. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, really, but uh, I'm too unfamiliar with the world of entertainment. Is where Rosita goes to war. And to a proposition of such unsure returns, I can only answer no. McTavish. You pardon me? Certainly. Hello, McTavish. No. 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 Oh. Did you get your invitation to that big affair? Say you've got to be there. Hey, you got to be there. Every tick, 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 the Terry knows the time is near. And representatives from every nation in the Western Hemisphere will certainly appear. How would you like to go to your say hello to your neighbor? Let's go to that Pan-American Jubilee. Come on and drink your toast to your and get close to your neighbor. Let's go to that Pan-American Jubilee. You're gonna see the way those Latins like to do the rug. Like to cut a rug. Like the Yankee Doodle Dandy likes to do a room style. And a sound is going down in history as a jumping fiesta. Bring your chum along and come along with me. To that Pan American I can cut the rug just like a Yankee doodle a dandy. 